We'll move uh, uh, straight on now to um, Paul Foster, who's going to uh, talk about the Iron Vision Consortium and, um, and how they have uh, taken the data and are running with it. Great. Thanks very much, Rory, for the invitation to speak. And it's uh, a pleasure to give you an idea of the, uh, uh, the Iron Vision research that we're doing with UK Biobank. <clears throat> the, um, uh, the inclusion of eye and vision data was uh, relatively late in the, in the time scale of the study, but I, I'd like to just give you an idea of why uh, we think it is vitally important. Um, eyes matter in, the, in UK healthcare and globally because the population is ageing, and uh, in people at or above the age of 75, unfortunately, one person in 10 is partially sighted, uh, and one person in 50 is blind. Now, uh, the one in 10 partially sighted, uh, it, it may not have catastrophic impact on somebody's day-to-day -day life around their home, but it probably would stop them driving, and I think most of us would agree that would, be, uh, that would have a, a very big uh, negative impact on our lifestyle. Um, in 2009-10, there were about 6 million people who went through NHS eye departments in the UK, about 7% of total NHS footfall, uh, which makes eyes and vision the, the second biggest sector in UK healthcare after orthopaedics. We do about 300,000 operations per year, most of them cataracts, um, uh, sorry, 300,000 cataract operations per year, making it the UK's most common uh, major surgical procedure. So as you can see, eyes does have a, a very big role in NHS care in the UK. So, uh, as I said, we were invi invited to participate partway through the study and uh, we were given the rather daunting brief of designing a comprehensive eye assessment that would take place within 10 minutes uh, with the, uh, the caveat that uh, about one minute of examination time had a notional cost of half a million pounds. So with a gulp, we put together a four-stage examination looking at visual acuity, chart reading, auto-refraction, measurement of spectacle correction, measurement of eye pressure, and also then a photograph and a laser scan of the retina. So let me just walk you through those four bits of the examination and tell you why they matter. So chart reading, this gives us an idea of somebody's fitness to drive, potentially their suitability for cataract surgery, whether they're likely to be sight impaired on a legal basis, but we also know that measurement of visual acuity is linked to mortality. So the worse somebody's vision, the more likely they are to die. So this is a, a very rough global indicator of somebody's overall health status. We measured uh, the spectacle correction. Now, um, th uh, the device that we use also measures the curvature of the cornea, the major refracting or focusing surface of the eye, and that is affected in a variety of different diseases, such as keratoconus, uh, a common corneal disease. Spectacle correction is a big part of the UK healthcare economy. It's a, a turnover of four billion pounds a year for, for optometry. Um, and about one adult in two will use uh, an, an, op uh, an optometrist in the course of their lifetime. So uh, it is an important part of the sector. Measurement of eye pressure. Eye pressure is the, uh, the main modifiable risk factor for glaucoma. Glaucoma is the second commonest cause of blindness worldwide and the leading cause of medically and surgically irreversible blindness worldwide. So it's an important thing. Uh, the device that we chose to use will also give us extra data on the, the biomechanical properties of the cornea. Now, the cornea is basically a sandwich of collagen, uh, the main connective tissue within the body. And it does this by measuring, with an air puff, the force of the air puff to flatten the cornea inwards, and then its relaxation, outward flattening pressure. And they're different and the difference gives us an idea of the stick, stiffness or flexibility of the collagen in the cornea. So we got extra data. In addition to the eye pressure, we got this extra biomechanical data, which we think will help us understand the health of the connective tissues throughout the body. But the, the cherry on the cake, and in fact, the, in this case, the cherry is probably larger than the rest of the cake put together, is the, uh, the photograph of the retina, 
and the laser scan of, of the retina. So these were two different components that were captured at the same time on this machine. Um, now, the device allows us to look at a cross-section through the retina, the light-sensitive film on the back of the eye, uh, and within that, we can actually discern different layers of cells within the retina. So this is a remarkably high-resolution uh, tool for looking at the structure of the, the nerve tissue in the eye. Now, to turn that into some, some kind of useful data, we, uh, we knew that it was possible to extract the measurements of the different thicknesses within those layers inside the eye. But that used to be done um, with a, a semi-automated system that could take up to two hours to run on each image. Now, the fact that we ended up with uh, 134,000 uh, eyes worth of data on 60, nearly uh, 67,000 people was uh, a, a great joy, but also a, a cause of consternation because how would we then turn the vast amount of data that we had collected into some kind of useful um, analyzable data set. Well, we were fortunate that colleagues who worked uh, for Topcon, the company that produced the, the, the device that we chose to do the scans, had about s six months before we finished collecting the data, produced a new automated system which would um, segment these different layers automatically. And so in collaboration with Topcon, uh, we managed to process all of these images with a, 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 an extraordinary rate of success. Um, and each uh, uh, image process took just over two minutes instead of two hours to, to complete. So that was uh, extremely fortunate that uh, industry technological development and academic need had coincided. Um, the other part of this uh, very large two-piece cherry on top of the cake is the, uh, the photograph of the retina. Now, um, on this, we can see the, the nerve at the back of the eye, the optic nerve, and we can also see blood vessels coming out of the optic nerve. These blood vessels, uh, we can look at them in great detail, we can measure them, and we can get an idea of the, the vascular fitness of the rest of the body. Now, colleagues who work at uh, Kingston University and St. George's University, Sarah Barman, Chris Owen, Alicia Rudnika, are leading a team uh, where they're using an, an automated system to measure the, the, the thickness of the, the arteries and the veins and their tortuosity. As I said, this gives us a very rich data set that uh, tells us about the vascular fitness of the individual. So... In the end, we got data on nearly 130,000 people uh, and OCT and retinal photographs on uh, uh, nearly 88,000 uh, people. And so this will give us a remarkable resource to study the uh, eye health and visual function in people in UK Biobank. But it's not just the eyes. As you know, the, the saying, the eye is the window to the soul, well, it's, it's also the window to the brain, and we will be uh, at a, an Alzheimer's conference in Toronto uh, in July. We'll be presenting data based on UK, UK biobank analyses where we have found that by looking at the thickness of the retina, we can predict the risk of cognitive decline in the future. So we've identified a new biomarker for potentially for dementia-like processes. So we look forward to presenting that. And also, as I've told you, by looking at the, the, the retinal vessels, we can estimate the risk of heart attacks, strokes, etc. So it's not just about the eyes. The eyes uh, are, are a, a very important indicator for the health of the rest of the body. And there's no systemic disease that does not have an eye sign. So we can tell a lot from the examination of the eyes. To analyse all of this data, it's been necessary to pool resources, expertise, enthusiasm and energy from all academic eye centres around the UK. So we formed a, a consortium. I'm part of the consortium, but only, only one member. There's a lot of us, 72 members currently, from 22 academic health sciences uh, groups around the UK. And we do research looking at different diseases. So up here on our website, you can see we've got a group looking at cataract, giant cell arteritis, uh, retinal detachment, and then also cross-cutting and methodological groups 
who are interested in, you, uh, in developing the OCT scanning, the laser scanning techniques, the genetics uh, and nutrition uh, data to look at eye and visual health. Um, if you do want to vis visit our uh, website, then you can find all of this information and more uh, at this URL. And there's a, there's a link from the main UK Biobank website into the eye consortium website. Uh, here's a snapshot of one of our annual meetings. We tend to meet once a year. This was uh, one of our meetings at the NEC in Birmingham. Uh, and so it's a, a forum for all of the people who work on the eye and vision data to meet and discuss results. Uh, there's our funders, and uh, we're very grateful to the enormous uh, contribution that they've all made to uh, maintaining this work. And so in summary, this is one of the world's largest eye and vision data resources. Um, uh, we're fortunate that we've got a, a, a large number of people from around the, the UK contributing to analysing the data and returning the data back for others to use. Uh, we've worked with industry to develop new cutting-edge techniques to, to analyse large volumes of data, uh, and I think this is a, a great resource for us studying eye and vision health in the future. Thank you very much.